We scoured the internet to find some of the most common wipe-causing mistakes of Season 3. We're talking deceptively difficult gauntlets that are terrorizing pugs, and boss mechanics that turn an otherwise easy run into a soul-crushing deplete. So stick around as we show you all of the absolutely horrific fails that you need to avoid in Season 3. But first, if you're feeling stuck at your current score where you just can't push no matter how hard you try, then Skill Capped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses you can find anywhere, including dungeon walkthroughs from some of the best players in the world like Echo's very own Maras, class courses made alongside some of the best and most renowned players of your spec, and so much more. We're so confident in our service that we're able to promise that you will gain at least 500 IO while using our guides, and if you don't, well, we'll refund you. No questions asked. We're able to offer this because instead of rehashing the same old basics you've heard a million times before, available all over the internet, we focus on pinpointing the exact areas where players like you truly need to improve. So what are you waiting for? Spend less time in Group Finder and get the score you've always wanted this season by clicking the link in the description below. For now, let's get back to the video. First up, we have a pair of mistakes coming from the last gauntlet and throne. Here you are in the home stretch. The only thing standing in your way to the finish line are these dweeby looking goblins. No problem, right? But then you quickly realize that size truly doesn't matter as these little tiny mobs seem to ravage your entire group one by one. Players will see this pull and think that because the mobs are small, they are no problem, only for someone to immediately die to some spears. These goblins are no joke, and many high rated groups straight up skip it because of its difficulty. This is one of those pulls where you need to be rotating stops and interrupts. Your goal is to stop throw spear with CC while keeping the aqua mages on focus to stop aqua blast. If any of these casts overlap with each other, the damage can be guaranteed to one shot. Okay, you made it through every set of goblins and you are finally towards the end, but now you find yourself ready to push through the corruption mobs when this happens. One of your wizards decides to plant their feet or even move backwards, chain pulling the mobs that are constantly spawning and causing your corruption stacks to refresh going into the next pull. If you've made it this far, avoid camping up near the corruption and move your wizard legs up to the final pull. Next up, we have a pair of mistakes from Darkheart Thicket. Like most first bosses, Archdruid Gladalus is meant to feel quite easy. With only a handful of mechanics, all you need to do is pass some simple execution tests to truck through his HP. But we're going to guess that you've seen this happen all the time to your melee. What's going on? Usually, one of two things is happening. Here the tank fails to think about the leap back, positioning themselves facing towards their group, and in the process, aiming the leap directly into the Feral Druid's face. So to any tank out there, please consider how you will face the boss before he leaps back. And as a melee, in order to prevent any collateral damage, make sure you are using the full range of your hitbox, even strafing slightly out before the boss leaps to the tank. Here is one case where it's totally fine to gimp yourself a few milliseconds of DPS just to avoid a random cleave. Then as we progress towards the end of Darkheart Thicket, there is another positioning mistake we want to avoid before crossing the finish line. Wiping here can be brutal since your run back is basically an entire marathon. Of course, you should know by now to prioritize kicks on Dread Inferno from the Imps since letting a few of these casts go through is basically a guaranteed wipe. But the real silent killer of these pulls are the Stalkers, whose Dark Hunt ability can deal an absurd amount of damage and is seemingly unavoidable. Well, unless you know a neat trick. What many players don't know is that this ability can actually be dead zoned, since it has a minimum range of 8 yards. So if you're standing in melee range like Stove's group is doing here, you can essentially bypass this entire mechanic, focusing all your attention into interrupting the imps. Now moving on to Atal Dazar, we have another pair of positioning mistakes. Rezan is meant to be easy, but we're guessing you've had countless runs where this happens. Your mage gets fixated and thanks to themselves, I'm clearly out of range, only to be eaten immediately after. This is all too common, since there is a bug in the game that prevents Razon's true arm length from showing, and as a result, players think they can stop to cast and wind up dying in the most hilarious way possible, and then typing WTF like they don't know what happened. The quick fix is to just respect the mechanic. If you get fixated, just pretend you are in Jurassic Park running away from a real dinosaur. And of course, don't hit any raptor bones along the way. Once again, this is a fight where you just need to sacrifice a tiny bit of DPS in order to prevent yourself from appearing on a top 10 Mythic Plus Fails montage. And once again, as we progress towards the finish line, there is one giant positioning mistake we need to avoid. Yasma turns what is otherwise one of the freest dungeons of Season 3 into a potential nightmare. And one huge reason for this is the spiders, of all things. Notice here that the spiders have been scattered all across the room, turning this simple mechanic into a game of Minesweeper. But why does this happen? Players make the mistake of thinking the spiders need to be nope. dodged, when in reality, the spiders should be kited. 
The mistake to avoid is scattering the spiders all across the room, but instead keeping them packed together, leaving more floor space so that everyone can freely move. While this might seem like an impossible task in pugs, it's definitely worth aiming for. Again, the biggest mistake is players thinking they need to dodge the spiders instead of thinking of them as something they should kite. A simple rule to follow is to focus moving with your group and never kite any spider in the path of your tank. Now, moving on to Galakrond's fall, we have yet another pair of positioning mistakes. The area before the second boss can be absolutely brutal for your healer, with Bloom going off on the tank and leaving two nasty dots. All while players have the potential to get blasted by Chrono Burst if they don't spread out. This mistake is pretty common, especially with melee who want to greet uptime. So obviously, the solution is to simply respect the mechanic, making sure to spread adequately for Chrono Burst and going the extra step to trade a personal if needed. And if you really want to outplay this area, you should know that there is a unique interaction with Bloom. If the initial hit is completely absorbed by the tank, then it will prevent the dots from going out. Obviously, a big shield is needed for this, but a few common trinkets can do the trick. Then, once you get to the manifested timeways boss, there are some more common positioning traps to avoid. While the light show on the ground might be mesmerizing, just make sure that anytime you get the chrono fitted debuff, you are in the light zone when it expires. And when it does, be sure not to stack directly on top of anyone else. But then immediately after, you need to be quick to reposition into the dark zone for fragments of time. Notice here how this rep paladin is still in the light zone, but is running clockwise, which is the exact direction the light zone is moving. And because of this, they have no chance to avoid the incoming orbs. Had they instead moved counterclockwise, this death could have been avoided. Now, let's move on to Everbloom, with a potential outplay you might be missing. First up, please help your healer out on bursting weeks if you decide to pull big. Listen up DPS, we know that it might be tempting to get those numbers high, but it's totally fine to slow things down. In the first area of the dungeon, you probably know by now that the Berserkers are obnoxious, especially when you pull multiple at the same time. And suddenly, your screen looks more like a Beyblade arena than a WoW dungeon. Luckily, there is a unique trick to preventing this from happening. If you track the cooldown of their bounding world with your weak aura, you can pre-CC their spin. As long as you stun them right before the ability will be used, then you will completely prevent them from jumping out and wreaking havoc on your fellow mage. Everbloom isn't the only dungeon where overpulling can result in a disaster. The first pull in Blackrook can be deceptively hard. On paper, everything should be okay. You have full CDs and lust ready. But if you are pugging this key and decide to start the key without coordinating interrupts, you are making a big mistake. If you go big and haven't assigned kicks, there is a very high chance your initial pull will be a complete disaster. This is one instance where you definitely should be communicating kicks pre-pull, making sure you know who will be kicking Soul Blade from the retainers and Soul Blast from the counselors. Both of these are vital casts to stop. Soul Blade is especially important due to its high damage combined with the frequency of its cast, which makes it perfect to assign to something like a Shaman if there is one in your group. In any case, take a few seconds before the run starts to make sure kicks are clearly assigned, and this critical pull can go much smoother. Let's wrap things up with Waycrest Manor, which is another dungeon where kicks can carry. Nowhere is this more true than on any pull where you have a Soul Charmer Witch and some captains. Once again, kicking is what will carry this combo since not only do you need to be shutting down every cast from the Soul Charmer, but you also need to be ready to interrupt Spirited Defense. Now, it's not that uncommon for any cast to go through, but if it does and you have any form of offensive dispel, then be sure to use it. Mages, this is one of those dungeons where if you see a glowing white border on this buff, then your eyes should immediately light up as your fingers go to press spell steal. Before we wrap up, if you want personalized help from an expert player, we're offering one free VOD review every month just for signing up to our service. This is a rare opportunity for players just like you to get direct feedback from the cutting edge players that you see compete every year in the MDI and DGP. And we're so confident in this that if you don't climb at least 500 IO when using our service, then you should get your money back, no questions asked. So what's there to lose? Visit the links in the description below to get started with an exclusive discount and begin your journey today. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching and see you soon.